Welcome to the part 4 of RCC design series on design of doubly reinforced beam. A beam is called a flexural member that is subjected to load from adjacent slab and beams in the form of uniformly distributed, uniformly varying or point load and moments. These load corresponding shear and torsional forces in the beam. Using IS456 2000, we will design the beam ensuring that it is safe under such loads let us assume the beam is 5 meters long 230 mm wide is simply supported on both ends and subjected to a load of 50 kN per meter also let's assume the grade of concrete to be m25 and the grade of steel as fe500 step 1 is to find the effective length and effective depth of the beam Effective length of the beam is found using this formula as per clause 23.2.1a which says for different types of slab basic value generally ensures that the slab is within deflection limits assuming a beam is simply supported we can take the basic value as 20 mf is the modification factor is a multiplier for basic value and is inversely proportional to the depth presently we will take a value of 0.6 Substituting these values in the equation, d equals 5000 divided by 0.6 into 20. Hence, the effective depth equals 420 mm. The total depth d is the effective depth plus clear cover plus half the diameter, which when substituted equals 450 mm. The effective length is calculated as per clause 22.2a, which states. effective span of a member that is not built integrally with its supports shall be taken as clear span plus the effective depth of slab or beam which in our case is 5000 as clear span plus 450 mm as effective depth of beam which equals to 5450 mm or center to center of supports that is 5000 plus 230 by 2 twice which equals to 5230 mm the lesser of the two has to be taken which in our case is 5230 mm step 2 is calculating the factored load moment and shear force factored load will be the dead load that is gamma into b into d which equals to 2.6 plus the imposed load of 50 kN per meter adding them gives a udl of 52.6 and factoring it by 1.5 gives a factored load of 79 kN per meter to calculate the factor moment mu we will use the formula wl square by 8 as we have assumed the beam to be simply supported substituting the values of w and l effective gives the moment of 270.5 kN meter next the factored shear force vu is wl by 2 Substituting the values gives a factored shear force of 206.6 kN. Step 3 is checking if the beam is singly or doubly reinforced by referring to annex G 1.1c and calculating the limiting moment using this formula. Here all values expect xu max by d is known which can be found from notes of section 38.1. which shows the different values of xu max by d for different grades of steel since we have used fe500 we will substitute the value of xu max by d in our equation giving mu limiting as 0.133 fck bd square substituting the values of fck b and d gives a limiting moment of 134.9 kN meter comparing it against the applied moment the limiting moment is less hence the beam needs to be designed as a doubly reinforced beam which takes us to step 4 that is reinforcement calculation for a singly reinforced beam we only need to calculate tension reinforcement while for a doubly reinforced beam we have to calculate the number of bars for tension as well as additional bars required in the compression zone nx g 1.2 gives the formula to calculate compression steel asc to find compression steel fsc first needs to be calculated from table f of sp16 in this table the ratio of d dash by d is calculated 
which in a case is 0.0714. So, for Fe500, interpolating between 0.05 and 0.1, the stress in compression reinforcement, Fsc, comes out to be 418 Newton per mm square. Now, substituting the values in the equation gives the area of steel in compression as 831.8 mm square. If we assume 25 mm dia bar, we will have to provide two numbers of bar to achieve this area. Hence, the compression steel is designed as two bars of 25 mm. Next, Annex G 1.2 also gives formula for total tension reinforcement as AST1 plus AST2. AST1 is calculated using the same formula as from Annex G 1.1b. Inputting the values and solving gives AST1 as 909.7 mm square. AST2 is calculated using this formula from NXG 1.2. ASC has been calculated before. So, AST2 on solving is 799.29 mm square. Hence, the total tensile reinforcement is AST1 plus AST2, which is 1709 mm square of steel. Assuming 25 mm dia bar, we have to provide 4 number of bars to achieve this area. So, the tension reinforcement is designed as 4 bars of 25 mm. Step 5 is to check for shear reinforcement whether tau V is less than tau C. Tau V is the nominal shear stress given in clause 40.1 as Vu by B into D. Substituting the values, we get tau V as 2.13 Newton per mm square. Now, to check the shear capacity tau C, we refer to table 19, which shows the design shear capacity from M15 to M40 grade of concrete and above. We've assumed M25 grade of concrete and the percentage of steel is calculated using this formula. Substituting the values, we get percentage of reinforcement as 1.76. For 1.76% steel and M25 grade of concrete, tau C is interpolated between 1.75 and 2, which on solving gives tau C as 0.782 Newton per mm square. And tau C max for M25 is 3.1 Newton per mm square. Comparing the shear stress tau V with the shear strength tau C, it can be observed that the shear stress is higher than the shear strength of the beam. But less than the maximum shear capacity, which means shear stirrups need to be designed. Clause 40.4a gives this formula which can be modified to find the spacing of stirrups. Here, Vus is the shear force carried by the shear stirrups and Asv is the area of shear stirrups. Vus is Vu minus tau C BD, where tau C BD is the shear capacity of concrete and Vu is the design shear force. Solving this gives the shear to be carried by stirrups as 131.06 kN. Next, ASV is calculated assuming the diameter of bar is 10 mm and it is two-legged. The reason we take two-legged bar is that shear force propagates from support diagonally and causes cracks. Shear stirrups are provided vertically around the main reinforcement so, if you look at a section horizontally, there are two legs of shear stirrups. Hence, to calculate ASV, we take two-legged stirrups. Substituting the values gives the spacing of 175 mm. IS code also has a recommendation for maximum spacing as per clause 26.5.1.5 and 1.6 as 0.75D or 300 mm and that calculated using this formula respectively. Solving and comparing the spacing, the lesser value is 175. Hence, shear stirrups are designed as two-legged tor 10 at 175 center to center. Step 7 is to check for deflection by comparing L by D required versus L by D provided. L by D provided is the effective length and depth which we've calculated previously which equals to 12.45. L by D required is basic value into modification factor. Here, modification factor is not assumed like previously but calculated as per figure 4 of IS456-2000. 
to find modification factor we need to know the percentage of tensile reinforcement and the stress in steel for service loads fs we already know the percentage of steel to be 1.76 and the stress value is calculated using this formula substituting the values and solving gives the value of stress as 252.86 newton per mm square now if we look at figure 4 for 1.76% steel and fs of 253 the corresponding modification factor is 0.8 this modification factor is now substituted in the l by d required formula giving a value of 16 and since l by d provided is less than l by d required the beam is safe in deflection as well the final step is detailing the beam from our calculations the main reinforcement is designed as four bars of 25 mm diameter in the tension zone and the compression reinforcement is designed as two bars of 25 mm diameter the shear reinforcement is designed as two legged tor 10 at 175 center to center with this the design of doubly reinforced beam is complete you can continue watching the rcc design series from here and youtube thinks this video is the best for you so thank you for watching and see you in the next video